Welcome to the Audio Imaginarium. Come on in, weary traveler. Hang your cloak on a peg, grab a stool, and come gather around the fire. There are stories to be told, and you are among friends. Cass Ingram, a.k.a. The Wilderness Doctor, is here in Hour 1 to talk about COVID-19. He'll also discuss several studies, as well as his own informal human trials, that have shown some promising results regarding wild oregano oil and several pathogens, including coronavirus. Uh, We're not talking about a cure here. We're just saying, based on the studies, this is something that's worth looking into further. Coming up in Hour 2, Dr. Al Prophet is a retired university professor and a paranormal researcher. He'll be here to discuss several of his fascinating investigations. Carlos Kajina is my technical producer, and Ryan White is the live stream producer. However, there is no live stream tonight. This program will be posted to my YouTube channel, Strange Planet, in the next several days. And by the way, we've reached 20,000 subscribers at Strange Planet, the YouTube channel. Let's get it to 21,000, shall we? Can you help? Cass Ingram is one of North America's leading experts on the health benefits and diseases and disease-fighting properties of wild medicinal spice extracts. Cass has written over 30 books on natural healing. He's given answers and hope to millions through lectures on thousands and on thousands of radio and television shows. His latest is COVID-19 Remedy. Dr. Cass Ingram, welcome back to The Conspiracy Show. How are you, my friend? Hey, hey, hey. It's been a a super pleasure. Uh, Great. How are you doing? Terrific. Are you sheltering in place, following all the protocols? Are you kidding? I, the only thing I'm doing is I'm, well, I refuse to go to a grocery store where they say, you can't come in here unless you're wearing something or you're, you have a purple, purple shoes on. Forget it. I'm passing. I'll eat out of my freezer. That's the only sheltering. In place. Otherwise, I'm just active. <laughs> God. But following social distancing and things no, like I'm that. No, I'm not doing any of that stuff. Are you kidding? I have COVID people coming to see me. I don't pay any attention to any of this stuff. I'm sorry. That's just me. <laughs> well, let let's, let me ask you first of all, right out of the chute here. We're hearing a lot now from U.S. intelligence and other quarters that this is not a, a, a natural uh, virus. In other words, it didn't evolve and then go from and jump from one animal species to humans, that it was somehow created, not necessarily as a bioweapon, but it was created in a lab. Yeah. Here's what I think we can say definitively. And definitive is a lot different than watching a bunch of YouTube videos and, 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 and you know, blogs, and you're not sure what you're seeing. In 1918, there was a problem. A lot of people died. It was from vaccines. I'm sorry. I just have to tell you. In uh, 1976, there was the swine flu. Okay. And it was in Fort Dix, New Jersey, and it was limited to about 200 people, including one serviceman dying. It was from the, uh, the, the vaccine they gave, the flu vaccine. In uh, 1977, it was the Russian flu, and the Russians and the Chinese were researching vaccines because they were worried about swine flu. It got out. They did a trial. It got out of the box, and it created a mini-pandemic. In 2009, we have H1N1, which the and farm industry made government change it to from swine flu to H1N1 to protect the industry. It was from inoculations given to pigs that mutated to have a human, a bird, and a pig gene. So what do you think this is? Something new that came from a bat? Yes, uh, there is a problem, but it it, rather than being created in the Wuhan lab, it could have just as easily been a vaccine that, that went sour, you know, because they were giving them to the pigs. Right. Now, here's, confirm or deny, what I've been reading and hearing, and, you, and you've been seeing many of the same videos that I have and so forth, is that for this virus, uh, which is basically SARS-2, yeah. uh, in order for it to... Um, evolve so that it could have jumped yes. from, let's say, a bat to a human. That evolutionary process takes something like, it could take up to 800 years. Yeah. But, but no, sorry. It, 
look, we've been around here a long time, since the caveman or something, I don't know, and we have no evidence that somebody ate a rat or a bat and caused, uh, uh, you know, the whole society to go sour, uh, the whole world. It's not a good idea to go around eating rats and bats, but it couldn't mutate to the human being and then, like you said, spread to China, to Korea, to Singapore, to Japan, then cruise ships, then uh, America and Italy and you know, Europe. No, it's impossible. So you can forget the wild animal to human. Uh, it's, it's finished, done. It didn't happen. But what's the closest animal to a human? It's the pig. What happened in China? 350 million pigs died from human they died from coronavirus infections in the last two years could it have jumped from bats to pigs to humans yes could it have been natural i don't know was it likely vaccines that agitated it most likely was it a biolab accident probably not something that they were making and putting in a petri dish probably that did not come out of the smokestack maybe some other mechanism but uh uh, but, you know, here's the deal here, okay? The deal is the last five pandemics were from industrial farms and vaccines. Vaccines vaccines given to the pigs. Yeah, pigs, chickens, in this case pigs. There were, there were illicit vaccines being sold in China because they were desperate, so, and they were also homemade. Scientists trying to sell uh, their vaccines, making it up illegally, not through the government channel, and and giving it to the, and selling it to the pig farmers, selling it to the uh, in, industrial farms. But this is all published in the Chinese literature. Uh, and by the way, top scientists in China, they've not been that unforthcoming. They actually, you can find truth there. They published a study in 2019 March that look, we're going to have a problem here. We are seeing a virus that has originated in bats now to swine in the swine population and then it will go to humans and we'll have a pandemic. This was seven months before the outbreak. Um, that's what we do know. And there's lots more to it. All right. So let me just get your take on a couple of other things. First of all, this quarantine, which just seems to be interminable. Uh, we yep. are now, I believe, in our seventh or eighth week up here in Canada. Um, is it, I mean, is it working? How do we, what's the science behind this, that this is the way to tackle this problem, given that, so for example, in Sweden, yes, they've had nearly 3,000 deaths, but we don't know the, the number of cases uh, because of, you know, lack of widespread testing, unless you know the denominator, the case fatality rate is, you know, you can't know it, but they haven't destroyed their economy in the process. That's the point. Yeah. Here's, Here's what we do know. If you have a, uh, a breakout of a drug-resistant bacteria in a hospital, you have to quarantine the patient. But we have no data, no proof that quarantining a society would have anything, any positive benefit whatsoever for a, a, a global spread of, of, of a sort of an animal virus or some sort of mutated virus. We have no proof. It's just done on supposition. Uh, and Sweden's done okay. We've, we've not done too well. Uh, you know, it's America, 70,000 deaths. Canada's done well. This, this is a pocket disease. You have to deal with the pockets. That's what China and Korea did. Not, not quarantine a society, no. Well, let me ask you quickly then about the... The fatality, the, the, the way that the mortality is being reported, because Dr. Bricks, who's on the, uh, the task force, the coronavirus task force, yeah. she said very early on, and this is not a direct quote, but she, and people can go and check this, she said, we are being very liberal when reporting mortality. In other words, and then she went on to say, if you have, if you have uh, COVID-19, in other words, if you die with it, we're reporting that as a COVID-19 death. Now, that's not the way we normally <laughs> approach these things. No, so can it, we trust it, it, that 70,000 figure? Yeah, it would have. There's two things. Um, first, she should not do that. She, if, if the pathology uh, report shows massive COVID-19 viral infection of the lungs, 
then report it. And if the, if the pathology report doesn't show that, then you cannot report it legitimately as it could, it could, be, could be the comorbidity issues and the virus is incidental. Uh, no, this is completely aberrant, bizarre, never done before. The second issue is that we don't know how many fatalities occur in somebody's home. What we do know is that there's a monstrous number of deaths in the hospitals, nursing homes. Now, let's look at that. There's an 80 to 90 percent death rate for intubation plus respirator. In some centers, it's 97 percent, China reported. Uh, so, and then the nursing home. So you, so you have, then you have the issue of drugs. If you, if you give drugs for the influenza, you'll kill the patient. It's the same with COVID-19. You cannot give drugs of any kind. You will interfere with the immune system and the patient will die more, at a far more rapid rate. There's some question whether the hydroxychloroquine is working. I think they're saying that if we add zinc to it, it does, and I'll get to that. But drugs are a bad idea with viral infections, especially the cold and flu. Well, here, the thing is, once, when, they, when they put someone on a ventilator... That's incredibly ev- um, invasive, invasive and incredibly stressful. Like people panic because you're oh, having yeah, this. They... Tube, so they so they give them a sedative. They might even give them morphine. That's they suppressing do. the immune system. That's, there's two things there. There's the issue of the common drugs like indocin, prednisone, and uh, perhaps uh, the remdesivir and these different antivirals. The second serious issue is exactly what you said. The only way you can control a ventilated patient, is to sedate them. And that's catastrophic to the respiratory system. The absolute worst chance you're going to give a person is to give them sedative drugs while they're on a respirator, or even if they are not. If they have the flu, you can't sedate them. The body's fighting to get this stuff out, respiring, in exhalation, inhalation, and you're going to suppress the respiratory system. You're going to cause fluid accumulation and collapse of the lungs, uh, and if you give Indocin and Motrin, you'll cause the lungs to bleed and the patient will die. There's two things, the mechanical ventilation and the drugs. There's a third one, secondary bacterial infection from a mechanical device like MRSA. So we're being very liberal. If they died of MRSA, we'll say they died of COVID. So we're actually hastening their death by putting them on a ventilator. There's no question about that. You would see a much reduced fatality rate if nobody was put on a respirator and you take your chances. I'll definitively prove that one day with a retrospective study, but I think everybody knows. Here's the other thing quickly, and then we'll, we'll uh, move on. And that is um, Medicare will, will pay $4,000 to a hospital for just a regular hospital admission. If that patient is diagnosed as having COVID-19, Medicare now pays $13,000. If they're placed on a ventilator, the hospital gets $39,000. And I'm not saying go. I'm not saying doctors are complicit in this, but hospital administrators hospital now could be the administrator. Look, they're bankrupt or they're nearly bankrupt. And now they're double bankrupt because nobody's going to the hospital. So, yes, they would be tempt there would be temptation to put everybody on a respirator that's possible. And I can tell you, I had a couple people on a respirator and supposed to go on, and I helped them get off and go home. And, and that it would cost them about 50 cents a day. <laughs> so, there's, so you don't have to do a respirator. So it looks uh, like we're, 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 we can't really trust the data, number one. And number two, we, we may be making a huge mistake in, in the way that we're treating people. Oh, yeah, and what about Cuomo's blunder? It's not only treating them uh, medically, but socially, how we're interacting with the human race is not a pretty deal. You're saying masks, bad idea. One thing is the masks, but Cuomo actually took active COVID patients and, and transferred them to nursing homes. But you cannot go in and see your loved one. Active COVID patients in the ER, in the different areas, but you can't go in and you're a healthy adult to see your loved one and help them pass over. They're, this is the most uh, ruthless uh, example of modern medicine. I mean, the most revelation that you're going to block the, your, your son from seeing the mother 
your husband from seeing the wife, the wife from seeing the husband. They're not allowed in. There's yeah. no basis for that. No, this is heart-wrenching. When you think of there are small children, maybe cancer patients, and they're dying surrounded by, I know healthcare workers are, are, are wonderful and they're loving, but they're not yeah. the mom and dad. We have children dying basically alone. Yes, and, yes, 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 that's happening. If they've been plunged with plungered with the COVID diagnosis, no one is allowed, or we'll be. be I was just told by a person, we can't go in. We'll be arrested, and we will go, we go to prison. Uh, that's the threat. Yeah, that's to me is the most heart wrenching aspect of this. The idea, and I know I've been to these. I hope this is an artifact that will be relegated to the dustbin of history. I went to my first or attended my first Zoom funeral uh, oh. where no, no mourners are allowed at gravesite. They have a computer sitting on a, near a headstone and they, they, video, they video essentially uh, the funeral, uh, Zoom yeah. funerals. Okay, so let's, um, let's talk. I've known you for probably a quarter century, <laughs> as hard as that is to yeah. believe. And uh, yeah. around that time, you had a, a book out called The Cure is in the Cupboard. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you, you talk about, or, or there's another one about, you know, in the supermarket, and we're talking yeah. about um, natural remedies, food, essentially, uh, spices, herbs that can be used to combat certain pathogens. Yes. And ever since then, uh, the, the establishment, uh, uh, Facebook, predictably, they've all really come down hard on on you uh to talk to me a little bit about what that's been like and 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 from what quarters are you being attacked well for me it's uh it's the medical uh, establishment industrial pharmaceutical they don't want me be, to be in practice so they they basically uh, uh, destroyed my ability to be licensed now it, uh, that was through being set up with a private detective posing as a patient to try to get me to charge excessive fees, which I didn't, but whatever fees I charged was, I think, $1,000 for each patient, and there were two of them. They claimed that the fees were excessive, and I didn't do a year analysis, and I should have, and I put the patient at risk, and, and, and all kind of stupidity, 38 counts. Uh, I had a, a heart attack. I knew I was going to lose my license. I recovered on my own without hospitalization. But what I did was I... I hired some private detectives posing as a patient to go on the board of medical examiners. And the medical examiners defrauded my private investigators. Well, this is why I was being prosecuted. So all of a sudden, when I put that data on the judge's counter, all of a sudden the counts went from 38 to 1. And the final count, for which I lost my 12 years of licensure work, you know, it took me 12 years to get to the license, only three years to practice, and then I was done. Um, was he? He he didn't get us the patient files in a timely manner, so he will irrevocably lose his license. You know, by that time I was so tired and sick of it. I just just take it and stuff it. <laughs> but you know, in a sense, I'm happy because I learned. Uh, I I wrote my books, and and I I started preaching about herbal medicine. So it was for a reason. Right. And, but even more recently, uh, and we're going to talk about the new book, COVID-19, the COVID-19 remedy. Uh, yeah. And, and you've been, uh, I'm you've been still, I'm being attacked. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly yeah. because of, uh, uh, you are very enthusiastic, uh, about the oil of wild oregano. Yes. Yes. I, Yes, the drug companies have hired a hitman, this silly professor. I don't even want to mention it. And he's got a video and different comments. He was given $5 million to go after what they call our quacks, right? So he's put, they've put the big focus on me because the, my work is a threat to industrial pharmaceutical. Huge. Monster threat. And so that's where they're focusing. And, and that's mainly the, the, my discovery of the oil of wild oregano. That's what they want to seem to undermine. You know, when Facebook trended my, my research on oil of oregano as an antiseptic here during this COVID outbreak, it went to 2,000 Facebooks in, in like 72 hours. And then uh, Facebook was 
contracted to change the algorithm and to ditch it and dump it. And so now it's not trending anymore. Along with Google and Twitter, they all went against my work. New York Times, LA Times, Washington Post all went against this work so that people wouldn't research uh, the data and find out they could actually do something about these uh, epidemics and the threats to them and their loved ones. And so that's what I'm up against right now. Was it, was it the LA Times that said there's a special place in hell reserved for you? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's what they were indicating because they said that the, whoever this promoter is, he's trying to make a buck on oil of oregano. <laughs> he said, he, anybody that does that it, uh, deserves a special place in the hell. Yes, they did say it. You can see that published. Well, we're, we're going to head into a break here, uh, Cass, but when we come back, we'll talk about uh, several scientific studies that have looked at not only wild of oregano oil, but other uh, spices and herbs and how they, uh, how they dealt with a number of potentially deadly uh, pathogens. We'll talk about that and more. Dr. Cass Ingram, his new book, The COVID-19 Remedy, right here on The Conspiracy Show. My name is Richard Serrett. Stay with us. Welcome back, Dr. Cass Ingram, my guest. Yeah. His brand new book, COVID-19 Remedy, The Real Truth Revealed. And um, first of all, how do we get a copy of that book? Because is it still well, available for free? all your listeners are going to get the electric free. The electric yeah. version is free. Yeah, you know, we got to do something about this. I will have a hardback version, or, I mean a, a, a book, and the book will be in May sometime. But this one, go to CassIngram.com and you download it. Get it while you can uh, CassIngram.com. There it is, right there. All right, and again, the electronic version is free. Uh, well, for the time being, anyway. But as yeah, soon as yeah, for the, the time being, uh, so get it uh, and spread it around. Get everybody to get a copy and bind it up, and you've got your book. All right, I want to talk to you. Uh, we were we mentioned oil of oregano oil, and um, talk to me about there was a study done, and the uh, the lead scientist in the study actually went into the study intending to debunk uh, the effectiveness of, of uh, certain spice extracts and, I keep and herbs. I are forgetting about all that that's been up against. Yes, Dr. F. Andron at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, coordinated by the federal government, before she even did the study, the objective was there's somebody on the radio talking about oil of oregano, and he's written this book, The Cure is in the Cupboard. we got to hit him. So what we have to do is prove that he's a fraud, so we can go after him and all of his, uh, uh, you know, all of his work. So she said, "Look, my objective was just to take the oil of oregano, which was the P73, of course, and prove it was useless. That it would be a useless endeavor to use it. That it's not an antiseptic. That all of the, uh, all of the commentary is fraudulent and fake." So she took it and put it in against deadly pathogens and the oregano ate them up. She excoriated her lab tech, saying, you must have used chlorinated water. you got to go back and use the distilled water. It came back, and the oregano ate the socks off of these germs. She sent it a third time, a fourth time. Every time, the oregano, in a d- dilution of like one in a thousand, destroyed the germs. And so That's how hard it's been. So we're talking about these pathogens. We're talking about things like E. coli, uh, food, you know, food poisoning. Um, what other types we of... We don't know at first what she did because she did it secretly. Then, once they determined that it was effective, this is what they did. They sought to patent it. You see? This is the tyranny that you get, that the whole country's up against, all the whole world. So they, they took $450 million U.S. dollars, taxpayer money, with the objective of, of making a uh, patentable drug. Because at the end of the researcher research, Ms. Drawn said, I'm a believer now. I think we should turn it into a drug. And she even, what she did was, we kept tuna fish completely fresh for 60 days with the, I'm sure they used the P73, the oil of oregano. It was edible after two months. You know how tuna fish goes bad in three days. Right. And that, yes, they killed nine deadly pathogens. That's true. But the spices weren't researched, just the oils. And they re- then researched nine oils, and the most powerful one was the oregano oil, without doubt. 
And and what other, do we know what other pathogens uh, were used in the study? Yes, salmonella. They tested food poisoning molds. Uh, I believe Shigella was in the mix. Pseudomonas and uh, a staph was in that mix. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of pathogen. Was, was it doesn't this a, matter anyway. Oregano eats eats the pathogen. If was it's this a virus, a, it eats. was it a peer-reviewed study? It's a it's a significant study published in the Journal of Food Protection. It's a major journal. Uh, you know, in I, I, it was carefully designed, and it was funded to to the tune of. Uh, four hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's that's a significant study. Right, right. And you mentioned so, it, the um, the tuna because what they did with with uh, with that is they created a uh, an edible sort of food wrap. I think they yep. originally it was with spinach, and we know spinach is very susceptible to things like E. coli, and it can, it goes bad very quickly. So they were they were protecting the spinach using a this edible coating. That was made out of what? From the uh, oil of oregano? Well, they they put oil of oregano, cinnamon oil, because the cinnamon did pretty well in there. And you know, uh, this was the USDA's ancillary research. What happened was USDA contacted me before this was published and said, "Hey, you know what? We want some of your oregano oil. Come on, we 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 come on. about four of them on the phone. I sent it to them. When they did their study, and they did two or three of these, they used tomatoes they used spinach they, they they also made a disc a film disc that they patented they would put the cinnamon and the oregano oil in the disc so that they could use that disc for luncheon meats against listeria uh you know to prevent staph to prevent e coli to prevent whatever in vegetation as well but that disc is made out of food it's made out of pureed apples pureed and that's patented now um, so that was the, you know, the U S government and sciences scientists sought to profit from my work at the same time. They did everything to prevent me from getting the word out to the public. That's the, that's the moral of what happened because I, they asked for my cooperation, which I, I freely gave to them. And, and I'm doing that now. I'm saying, look, you've got the expert who started the whole industry right here that could stop this so-called pandemic. And, and put a stop to the deaths uh, needlessly in the nursing homes, as well as the hospitals, as well as the people that, uh, contracting the disease. So, um, but yeah, it's been nothing but resistance. Even From though... The medical license to the research, and now this, this professor, all sorts of people being solicited to stop this guy. That's, you know, when I went up to... Um, to Toronto, or I met with the top distributor for natural supplements and there was an arms dealer from ottawa who they said i had to meet he said look dr ingram we're taking over the oregano oil business you know he was an ottawa uh, lobbyist politician here's my partner from overseas you're going to be on the curb with a tin cup begging for change when we're done with you that happened in 1999 I didn't get into this to get to fight with people. I mean, I my job is above all do no harm and to uh, you know help people come into life, help them pass through peaceably with free of disease, and help them ease them out. You know, it hurts me so much, Mr. Serrett, to see what's going on, to see what's happening in, in these people. You no, know, you're not allowed to see your loved one. You can't do that to people. You will ruin them permanently. I wouldn't be surprised if the suicide rate goes up a hundred, is five hundred percent. Well, this can... that's right. They're not. They're giving us all these models that were faulty from this Professor Ferguson at the Imperial College. This was the guy that predicted mad cow disease would kill something like two hundred thousand people in the UK alone. It ended up killing two hundred and seventy-seven. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's yeah. Um, and and but here's the thing. I, I want to go back to the study for a moment because. This was a, a published study which showed oil of oregano uh, a very effective in killing uh, E. coli and, and different things like that. But it's an in vitro study, right? It's in a test tube or a Petri dish. This, this would be kind of an in vitro. It would have been inside the... Uh, yes, it, they, they would have put the bacteria into food and, and see if the oregano oil would work in that environment. It was in vitro. 
and the tuna fish is in vitro. My work on coronavirus, influenza, and bird flu was in vitro. But you know, these universities are compromised. The professors are scared. The doctors told me we're not going to do any research for you in humans because we'll be fired. We'll lose our job. We'll lose our privileges at the hospital. I've already been through this. Uh, it's difficult to get anybody to do the human work. But, however, I'll tell you this, because you might be listening and thinking, what about COVID, doctor? You're not mentioning I have a human clinical trial going on now on my own where I have nurse practitioners, I have uh, ex-drug reps, and I have a doctor who are giving their COVID-19 and their viral flu customers, they're giving them the oil of oregano, the sinu orega. I think, no, I think the protocol is the oil of oregano, the juice, and a rega resp or the gel caps. Anyway, that's kind of, so I'm not speaking for the company, but I am doing this. I am sending what samples I have in my stock to the doctors, to the nurses, and I'll, you know, the results are pretty spectacular. Um, you know, we'll get into it, but, but yeah, nobody's going to help. The government won't help. Uh, and, and the industrial pharmaceutical complex is fighting, uh, resisting. Okay. We just, using their we have about a minute, and we'll talk about this more in depth on the other side of the break. But just in the next minute, just t- tell me a little bit about uh, your studies with oil of oregano and wild oregano and yeah. bird flu, so etc. I, I had a good Samaritan who gave, and I've got this written up in my case histories, who gave her neighbor, who was on a respirator, the oil of wild oregano. Uh, his wife or whoever rubbed it on his feet two drops twice a day, and two drops on his calves and shins. Within two days, the doctor yanked the respirator and said, your, your, your panels are so good, your profile is no more respirator for you. Within two more days, he checked out of the hospital. He took only oil of oregano, no claims for any of the companies who make it. This is just me as a doctor in my book, and also this oregoresp material. That's what the health food store owner gave. Those two products only. Uh, I think there may be one other. Here's another case. This was a person who was given, 17-year-olds, a potential death sentence, and, and he, instead he got a hold of the oil of wild oregano super strength. He put it in a diffuser. He's a 17-year-old. And he was about to go to the hospital, but he, just keep, he kept inhaling every hour the diffused oil. And he took some capsules of the same. Uh, he did not go to the hospital. He did not get the double pneumonia. He did recover. All right. I've got to take a time out. We'll come back. Dr. Cass Ingram, the COVID-19 remedy right here on The Conspiracy Show. Stay with us. Hey, if you like The Conspiracy Show, you're going to love my podcast, Conspiracy Unlimited. New episodes drop every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And now there's Conspiracy Unlimited Plus. For just $1.99 per month, you can gain access to my vast back catalog of over 350 episodes. Plus, you get two commercial-free bonus episodes every month. Commercial-free. Just go to ConspiracyUnlimitedPodcast.com and click on Get Access to Premium Episodes. Go to ConspiracyUnlimitedPodcast.com and click on Get access to premium episodes. Dr. Cass Ingram is here. His brand new book is The COVID-19 Remedy, and it is available for free as an electronic download from CassIngram.com, C-A-S-S-I-N-G-R-A-M. And you can just uh, click on, if you go to strangeplanet.ca, Click on uh, Dr. Cass Ingram's name and it'll take you right to the website. And that's a free download for the time being until the book is is uh, published in hard copy. Now, we have to say a couple of things. First of all, you know, the old medical disclaimer, uh, this is, um, you know, we can't say that this is a cure uh, for anything. But right. it has shown in some studies that it is very effective against certain pathogens. You have done some of your own human trials. This is anecdotal, but yes, anecdotal it, human trials, right. it looks promising and it deserves further study. We can say that much. It deserves I think we can further say study. That. And I think we need to say that there's some data here. Uh, oregano oil is 21 times more powerful as a phenolic compound than Lysol. 
Uh, so, you know, because you got Trump saying, can we do anything to clean these things out? You know, and the idea was at least all right. But no, I mean, you, you cannot take a synthetic and you cannot breathe chlorine. You can't put it on your skin. You'll burn and kill yourself. But the fact that it's 21 times more powerful than the synthetics that we're spraying on the streets has to be looked at. Right. hundred percent. So get back to that 17 year old. He, you said he had a death sentence. Was he did he have a comorbidity that that it was so serious? He was an orphan and sort of malnourished uh, and no father figure. His grandfather was sick with the COVID, and he didn't know that. He gave this child the sickness. The grandfather was in the hospital. He was about to join him. That was the situation. So they're going to put me on a respirator. That's what they're planning, and, and that's when a good Samaritan pitched him a couple of products, dropped them off on the quarantine porch, and he took it. And it's a case we're writing up. A third interesting case, and all this, look, all we're saying is that we should look at this. This case was uh, through a nurse practitioner, and she's a physical therapist. We have it written up. She was about to be intubated, and she said, I think I'm going to die. I saw the text. They don't want me to publish the text. They're afraid the hospital and the physical therapist will lose, you know, there'll be problems. So I'll publish the case history instead. The girl said, or the practitioner said, no, don't give up. Uh, and so she smuggled in a bottle of oregano spray, oregano bay leaf spray. The woman was instructed, and she sprayed it four times on the back of her throat. Her respiration improved so dramatically that the physician said, we will not intubate you. And within 72 hours, she checked out of the hospital. This is a physical therapist. This is no minor issue. You know, in terms of someone that knows. Uh, her oxygen profile improved, and she eventually did not need any more oxygen. Now, I have a hundred of these cases that we have to look at, some through a doctor, some through a nurse, some through myself, um, and they're all equally dramatic, some even more dramatic. And this is an interesting case of a guy who had double pneumonia, who was given prednisone and was told to go home, uh, and there's nothing more we can do about it, and who has then said, I have to go back to the hospital, doctor. I really do. I'm, I think I'm going to die. So I said, why don't you do this? They're going to take you if they have to take you anyway. We're not going to interfere with that. But take the oil of wild oregano, something called super strength, and take 10 to 15 drops every half hour. He, he stopped the double pneumonia symptoms and the big pressure on the chest. It still stayed a bit, but he stopped the crisis in 24 hours, the crisis was shut down. The fact that this is working within minutes to 24 hours, you have to look at it. You right. can't just keep beating up on it and making fun and belittling and, right, and, and doing all sorts of scandalous attacks. Your whole, the whole nation is shuttered. Exactly. I mean, the whole world. We're in a war here. And in, in, in war, you, 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 can't, you have to look at everything. We're in a desperate strait yes. here. Yes. Listen, we'll take another we time out. When we come back, we'll, I want to talk about your your uh, studies with wild of oregano oil and uh, the bird flu and and uh, some other things, and we'll find out what happened. Uh, Cass Ingram, the author of COVID-19 Remedy, back with more in a moment, right here on The Conspiracy Show. My name is Richard Serrett. Don't go away. We are back with Dr. Cass Ingram, the COVID-19 remedy available as a free electronic download at CassIngram.com. And uh, it's available for free for a short while. So make sure you get your download. Again, just go to strangeplanet.ca and click on uh, Dr. Cass Ingram's name. That'll take you right to the website. Then just download the uh, the book, the electronic version for free. It'll be available as uh, in hard copy form uh, very soon. So you, you did your own uh, in vitro studies with wild of oregano oil and things like the bird flu, which is a very, very de deadly, potentially. Oh, extremely deadly. And, and think about this. What's going to happen to our society if bird flu breaks out which and, 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 and migrates from person to person? If it becomes virulent enough that it can uh, infect from you to two or three others, and on it goes... It's 60% fatal, right? So I wasn't that interested in bird flu, but what we did was an, an in vitro study published in antiviral research and abstract foreign and presented before the peers 
where we took the the bird flu and influenza A as well as the human coronavirus and infected it in cell culture. So that gives me 5 million viruses per every centimeter of fluid and cells. That's a lot of viruses, 5 to 10 million. So then I can put in something. I could put in corn. I could put in isopropyl alcohol. I could do whatever. Instead, we put in oil of wild oregano. So we have an intracellular virus now. It's not just a Petri dish. And it obliterated 99.99% in two minutes of these 5 million per centimeter of blood. So we have, say, say we have a billion viruses that went down to basically nothing. By 20 minutes, it went down to 150 dead, basically dead viruses. In other words, the viruses could not regrow. As long as you kept some oregano oil in the medium, nothing. That's one dose in 20 minutes, by the way. So then we did the same with influenza. We had 10 million viruses per centimeter of blood. We gave the oil of wild oregano super strength. And we also used something that you know and I both, we both take called oregaress, which is cumin, oregano, sage, and cinnamon. So we gave both. And the oregaress in the coronavirus, by the way, it reduced it not to 150, but to zero. So there was non-detectable. It seemed that this multiple spice worked a little quicker than even the oil of oregano, but they're both good. Okay? So in this case, we dropped it to 99.99% in two minutes and to, to virtually nothing by, uh, by the 20 minutes. So now you've got the bird flu, right? I mean, that's going to be different than something that's 0.01% fatal or 1% fatal for corona, I guess. But this was the human corona. It wasn't the same. But this doesn't make that much difference. But bird flu, we know, is 50 to 60%. So they, they came to me and they said, it, 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 di it didn't work. I said, what do you mean it didn't work? I said, what kind of a dose did you use? Oh, the same. The same dose for flu? And this is, fifth, you know, this is a thousand times more fatal? I said, yes, put 25 times the dose. <laughs> and it worked. 99.99% destruction in two minutes. What does that mean? That means that if you keep making fun of natural medicine instead of looking into it, if the bird flu broke out, the whole world would be we'd done. We're finished. Because we've made so much fun, belittled, pushed down, uh, propagandized. The, 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 look, you know what God says? Hey, man, you don't believe in God? That's okay. I, I feel sorry for you, but I happen to think it's a good idea. He says in the Old Testament, look, I, I'm not a scripture expert. It says something about cleaning yourself out with hyssop, which is from the Hebrew esoph. It only means wild oregano. It doesn't mean anything else. So there's only one recommendation anywhere in a scripture for an herb, a specific herb, to be using it. And it's the oregano in the mountains. Wild oregano. Clean. Trump wasn't too far off. Right, right. What What is it about wild oregano, the oil? Uh, what is the active ingredient? It's the phenolic carvacrol, thyme all, small amount, and terpenes, various terpenes. There are about 30 different ones. They're all antiseptic. Uh, there's two mechanisms of action. One is that it cleans things. It, it actually will... Dis and our, our work showed that it disintegrated the viruses. So that's like cleaning. So, so it, it, it destroys those little spicules, for example, on corona. It destroys the, the shell of the vet capsid of the virus. It destroys the, the, the cell wall of the bacteria and the guts leak out, and then it eats the guts. It's like an eating agent. The second mechanism is it induces the immune system to, to do a better job at cleaning uh, pathogens. The third is interesting. It's anti-cytokine. You know that cytokine storm that leads to so much trouble with the flu or with double pneumonia? That's the immune system uh, attacking itself, ta attacking the basically body. Basically, it's, it's an overreaching immune system. And the explosiveness of the germ with the immune system and the body cannot defeat the inflammation quick enough, and they check out. Uh, and that's a gene. And the gene is turned down 50 to 70% by the oregano. Can you imagine, just take a little tube that you have, a little uh, cafe ray tube radio, you tune that down to just a little whisper, then you could survive. Right. Black and seed oil does it too. Black uh, seed uh, oil. Human, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, they do. You know, we, we need to do something. I've got the black seed miracle we talked before, but that's a powerful lung, uh, lung maintenance uh, supplement. You know, that uh, the two together would be uh, indivisible or 
undisputable. Dis- right. You mentioned the spicules, and this is the the part of the the coronavirus uh, from from which it gets its name because it it looks like a crown, and that's what corona is. So these spicules, that's like the key that unlocks uh, the door allowing the virus entry into our cells. Correct. That is correct. That is, if without the spicules, it's even even if the rest of the cell is there, it's it's a dead duck. It can't do anything. So it it is killing the spicules. It's destroying. Oregano them. Eats, oregano oil eats the spicules. Cinnamon oil does too. This is not a bay leaf oil. Eats. These essential oils they melt those spicules. They're done. the The whole thing is finished. If we could just popularize an antiseptic spray with oregano base. Bay leaf would be great. The two together are pretty powerful. They're both, remember, the Greeks used to wear that wreath on their heads. Why do you think they did that? To protect them from, that's the bay leaves, to protect them from plague. It wasn't just a spiritual thing. And so if we could popularize something like that in the subways and the airplanes, if we could, if we could popularize oil of oregano as a preventive, this would be done. We would interrupt the viral transmission and we would be back to normal. But we need to popularize in the nursing homes and in the in the hospitals, the front line. You know? And in the meantime, uh, you you could you could use it. I'm guessing to uh, as a cleaner to spray sinks. Oh, and you different could. Things. Yeah. You could either put the oil in, or you're better off to get the actual spray. Uh, it's called Arega spray to help your listeners, and you can dilute it ten to one with water, and then use it around the house five to one. For your own personal use, you can use it full strength, like the woman that was laying there that was going to get intubated. And here, here's what I, here's what I'm astonished from, though more than these two mechanisms, how could several of these people get dramatically better from two drops under the tongue twice a day or three times a day? How? There's an energy. This is a filth vaccine, maybe you know, most likely pig or whatever. It's a filth disease lab. It's filthy. It's garbage. And, you know, Wuhan market, I don't care. And you're giving something from the highest energy. So it's energy. It's a soul. It's a, it's a miracle energy that something mountain grown where nothing else can grow on the rock. You extract its essence. So it's doing something we don't understand. It's resetting the body for these people. It's allowing the body to function. No one will be able to figure out this thing. Well, we're not saying it's the cure. We're saying it deserves to be researched and looked into and, and based on your uh, anecdotal and, and uh, sort of limited, we have to say that, human trials. Yes. It is showing tremendous promise. It and, is, and I, I quote the case histories in the book. I'll quote more. They are legitimate. They're accurate. I have some individual cases where the person wrote me a letter on my website You've got to do something to, to look at this world. You can't just deny that this is in the Old Testament to sort of warn people. Why do you think it's there? You know, pork flesh is also warned against, right? So you're going to ignore it all and let the world shut down and let, the, let people start punching themselves out in the street, which you're already doing. Uh, and the one guy got shot because he told somebody they should wear a mask. They whipped out a six-shooter and shot him in the head, killed him. At a, at a convenience store. I mean, you know, this, this is enough. Enough, Put an indeed. End to it, and I know how to do it. The COVID-19 remedy, go to CassIngram.com, download your free electronic version while it lasts. Dr. Cass Ingram, always a pleasure. Thank you for this. You betcha. Bye now. Dr. Al Prophet is next to discuss his career in paranormal investigation. Stay with us. Stay with us into Hour 2 of The Conspiracy Show. My name is Richard Serrett.